Controversial. Compelling. The Tommy Schnermacher Show. Hear Tommy live weekdays 9 to noon on CJAD 800. It's kind of big, a big debt. Why exactly is Quebec have a $250 billion debt? We'll ask the candidates in the first of our weekly campaign debates. Today we welcome in studio Stéphane Le Bouillonnec for the CAQ, Raymond Bachon for the Liberal Party of Quebec, and Jean-François Lisée for the Parti Québécois. Uh, very, very quickly, very short answer to this one. Why your party is best suited to deal with the economy, Monsieur Bachon? Best suited to deal with the economy because we are the party of the economy, and that's our first priority. And it's been over many years, and we've uh, brought Quebec through the recession and uh, this world financial crisis better than any other society in the world. We've recuperated more jobs, and we're going back to a balanced budget faster than others, while protecting the health and social services, which is not the case of the two guys in front of me. Okay, speaking of one of the guys in front of you, Mr. Uh, Lise, you've said that the Quebec economy is uh, doing very well. Has uh, Mr. Bachon doing, been doing a great job? Well, I think he, he should have done much better. And yes, Quebec, as uh, Raymond, which is my favorite uh, liberal minister, I, I must say, I'm glad to see him today, uh, Quebec has done well. Uh, because of the structure of its economy, because of what all governments have done before. But why is the PQ best suited to go forward? Well, first, because balancing the books, that's the PQ that did that. I was with Lucien Bouchard when we did that. We brought Montreal's economy into the new economy. That's the PQ that did that. And I think uh, we, should, we could have rebounded much better had the Liberal Party did not dismantle Investment Quebec and the SGF as they did before, before Raymond came. Uh, that was dreadful for uh, bringing uh, foreign investment in Quebec. So mutual admiration society so far. Uh, let's see what we get from the CAQ. Uh, Monsieur Le Bouillonnec? I think it's uh, a land of broken promises. You know, the Liberals, when they took power in 2003, they said that they were going to a deficit zero, and uh, that promise wa was never respected. And then since then, the deficit and, and the debt ballooned by 42%, you know, like uh, 55 billion, which is incredibly high. And when we're looking at uh, where stand Quebec now, it's just like uh, if we had up the federal debt, it's like uh, just below Greece, Italy, and Portugal, all the countries that uh, are having problem uh, these days. Okay, now, I, I was going to ask this at the very end, but I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to have you ask each other some questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, Mr. Lise, what questions do you have for Mr. Bacha? Well, you know, uh, Raymond, uh, if, you, if we ought to have growth, more growth in Quebec, uh, one of the important things is... Uh, Productivity. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. And one of the factors of productivity is job training and training of the people who work in our services, in our factories. And when the, P the PQ government introduced uh, uh, legislation that uh, forced companies to have 1% of, uh, of their budget to formation training of their employees. And when the liberal co government came in, they almost completely dismantled that. And so we're nine years behind in training our workforce because of that. Why did you do that? I think I'd like to answer the first question you posed because going back to a balanced budget and like Stéphane did, because François Legault and Pauline Marois, same team, okay? How did they do that? They dismantled the health sector. They dismantled basically and put retired people. We did it while protecting the health sector. Pro the key to productivity in Quebec is getting people at work. We've, we are reducing income taxes of the 60-year-old and, and, and more by $1,500 so they can stay in the market if they want to be in the market because that creates wealth. We've succeeded better than anybody where you were there to getting women in the workplace. We're now the best, the best in Canada with all the policies. But why we, dismantle we the 1% put... policy? We didn't dismantle the 1% policy. No, it's, it's still there. It's, it's working. There it's still there for a very small portion of the economy. We're investing in, we're investing in training as had never been done before. That's not true. Do you have a question for Mr. Lise? Mr. Bachon? I'm uh, I'm totally surprised by what the PQ is is the, the financial part platform of the PQ. Uh, they have none basically. Okay, we're going back to a balanced budget. They want to dismantle the generations fund. Both François Legault and and, uh, and Pauline Marois. Want to, that is the key to the confidence of the rating agencies. We are going to run. Not only we're going to be in a balanced budget if we're elected next year. We're going to run a two and a half billion dollar surplus in four years. That is going to go a hundred percent in the generation fund, reducing the debt. And that is why the five rating agencies of the world have confidence in Quebec and saying this is a great determined plan, one of the best they've seen.
Okay, Mr. Baranek. Oh, that was a question for me. Yes, that's right. Should oh, I answer? Yes, of course, of course. Sorry. You, you run this show. So yeah, yeah. No, I'm following your lead. But the question was for you, so okay. go for it. Well, first, you have to say that the only Minister of Finance of the recent history of Quebec that actually reduced the debt is Pauline Marois when she was Minister of Finance. She made a $500 million deposit on the debt. The second thing we should say is that uh, dismantling this fund of generation, I was for it at the beginning, uh, that put some money in the fund of generation on the assumption that it would grow faster than the debt. But it didn't work. In fact, the, the, the return on investment on, on this fund is dismal. So it would be better just to put a deposit on the debt. And that's what we'll do if we, uh, we take power. Mr. Bouyanek, a question for Mr. Bachon or for Mr. Lise, whichever you prefer. Uh, yeah, Mr. Bachon, I'm uh, trying to have discussion being fair because I, I know that you're an honest man. You've been my boss for years, both at SECOR and Front Solidarité. But how could you believe that with Quebecers thinking that 70%, 70% of the Quebecers think today, this morning in a poll, that the Liberal government is a corrupt government? How do you think you are going to have the moral authority to bring Quebec back on track? Stephen, are you saying I'm corrupt? No, not at all. I said, just, I said you're not. Okay. I said you're not. I said you, you were an honest man. And you think Robert but just, is in the, and Yvon Bolduc and, and Yvon Bolduc I don't and, know. and all the others that are there, there one by one. I think it's easy to say things. And when Jacques Duchesneau was in the Parliamentary Commission, okay, the only people he attacked was the PQ, basically. And when he was in front of the Commission Charbonneau, he says a lot of things. He couldn't name one file. He couldn't name one dossier. Uh, he, can't, uh, he, he can't work with the UPAC, which was the most the most the strongest unit against corruption that exists with the New York City uh, corruption unit. These are actions that were put in place by this government. Uh, corruption has existed but in construction the, industries for what are you going to for do with centuries 70%, 70%, and in New Jersey. Seventy percent of the Quebec thinks that, and it means that there is a lot of liberals amongst them. So how, what are you going to do to rebuild the credibility of the Liberal Party? Well, we're going to convince them that uh, basically that... Uh, that uh, is not a factor, and it's e it's easy to say things, but when you uh, name a name, you know, when, because when you're in front of me and you're saying, okay, no, you're honest, Mr. Bechin, and when you're in front of another, no, he's honest, Mr. Bechin, and I think you're honest, Stefan, and Jean-Francois, and all others, and I think the class of politicians that are there, chapeau to people that are putting their face in a poster, uh, mm. but the others, basically, it's easy on Twitter to say anything. It's, uh, it's hard to live up in if the specifics. Let, let's go to the text questions that does just come in. This one, someone's saying, the PQ destroyed the Quebec economy for more than a generation since 1976. Mm -hmm. You must have been expecting that uh, that kind of text, Jean-François Lisée. Well, it's, uh, it's just not correct. I mean, the fact that the, the Quebec economy has grown uh, at a faster pace than Ontario's economy and uh, the U.S. economy for the last 25 years, both over some liberal years and some PQ years. And I think Lucien Bouchard and uh, Jacques Parizeau and Bernard Landry have done a tremendous job of, of uh, getting Quebec out of the crisis of the time, and Pauline Marois as Minister of, uh, of Finance. And that's why we're catching up of our historical gap uh, with Ontario and the United States in these years. It's no secret, Jean-Francois, they say you're a, a committed sovereignist. You want Quebec to become an independent uh, country. Sure. Yeah. Uh, if it's something that's so fantastic and so wonderful, uh, why not to promise a referendum as soon as possible? Well, I wish for a referendum as soon as possible, but I think it would be uh, it would be foolish uh, to tell uh, Canada and our adversaries this is what we'll do exactly at this point, at that point. We have to uh, first see how the situation evolves, uh, keep the possibility. To, if You have to be agile. You have to have reactivity. You have to be in a situation where it will be a success. So we will, will not lead Quebecers to another defeat. That's for sure. But if my friend Raymond Bachar, if my friend Stéphane are in power, and during the next four years, Quebecers are fed up with the Harper Canada that he's building, they will not have the choice to leave. With us, they will have that choice. 945. And, and tell me, that's very clear what yeah. he's saying. Yeah. There will yes. be referendums and one major referendum. Our debate on the economy in studio. Raymond Bachon, Parti libéral du Québec. Stéphane Le Bouinec of the CAQ. Jean-François Lisée of the Parti québécois. Monsieur Bachon, we're talking about a referendum. Are referendums good for the economy? Referendums are a disaster for the economy. Which, you know, look at what's going on to, in Europe right now, which are in huge crisis. China is going, uh, slowing down. The United States, what the world needs now, what Quebecers need now, is jobs. And that comes from stability, not instability. Plan Nord. You know, uh, while the PQ, yeah. you know, like uh, there is an option, you know, if you, you don't like the Liberal Party because of the, all of the 
things that we've heard the past few months and days. And you don't want a referendum because you believe that it's going to be very disruptive for Quebec, given the fact that Quebec is broke, period. Maybe it was a possibility on the 80s and maybe 95 to get that option on the table. It's not anymore. And especially not with a party which is promoting welfare state and kind of uh, politics where you say buy today and pay later. You know, uh, we're who, going who to you're suggesting is doing that? The PQ. The, the PQ? PQ. Yeah, well, a welfare state, Jean-Francois? Well, I disagree with everything. There, yeah, but, I figured, yes. But uh, w one thing I'd like to say is that uh, Raymond will agree that Quebec's economy is more diverse, stronger now than it was in 1980 when he voted yes, in 1995 when he voted yes, Stéphane as well. We have a debt problem. The debt uh, grew st tremendously under uh, Raymond's management and his, his previous ministers, more so than it should have done, and it is a problem. Uh, but uh, clearly, Quebec is more hey, can I it, it is better, better uh, equipped uh, to, okay, to become a sovereign state at any time in, it, in, its, in its history. And the worst financial crisis of this past 50 years, our debt over the past three years have gone up by 3% of GDP, Ontario's by 10 the United States and Europe by 22%, 26%. You know, we have managed better than that. And there's, in the debt, you know, what's important, are we going to reduce, we are going to reduce the debt to 45% of GDP. Now, in that debt, there's a question of fairness. When you build a new hospital, you know, the, the McGill Hospital, or did you put 400 million in the Jewish, that is going to be used for 70 years by your grandparents, your parents, your kids, and your grandchildren. It would not be fair for the taxpayer of today to pay 100% of that. That is the no, debt. That is, that is a good that is debt. That's the infrastructure. That. But part of yeah, debt, I, I disagree with that. Wait, wait, wait. One rule only, one at a time, okay. yes? Yeah, I think bad debt and good debt, you know what, like, for example, a family. If the roof is leaking uh, and you're already broke and you go and you to tell your bank, hey, my roof is leaking, you can't say it's going to be an investment. You know, it's exactly what the liberal they did. It's good debt, just redoing the bridges and the road. It's, it's not new bridges, new roads, not at all. So we ballooned the, the debt, you know, by 55 billion, which means that each, each year now, the interest, the debt services, is increased by almost a billion. And you know what? When the liberals, they have good ideas like increasing the fee for the resources. It's like 250 million. It's just one third of the increase of the debt service these but, days. But oh, okay, wait, wait. Oh, now, Mr. Lise's turn. Okay. Yeah. Well, one of the uh, terrible factors of this growth in debt, uh, uh, we did better than others. We should have done much better. $16 billion a year for infrastructure, for roads, for asphalt, mainly asphalt. But we know that corruption is in the system. Uh, we know that for a fact because in the last two years, the costs have been going down because of the inquiries. And so the, the rule of thumb of international economists on corruption in construction is about 30%. So we don't have these facts for, for sure, but it's a good rule, rule of thumb that in the last nine years, we had $5 billion a year lost to corruption in this infrastructure. Yeah, so just that. That's I mean, bull shot, no, That's you know the international that. rule of thumb for corruption. Get a colorful why, language from the Liberal Party. Why, yeah. why, is 20%, <laughs> no, no, but, why, why does it cost 20% less to build in Montreal now than two years ago? Can I get back the microphone to answer what yeah, Stefan yes, said? I, I, because I didn't take it away from you. Go ahead. What you're saying about repairing infrastructure Structure. If you, François Legault and Pauline Marois, have, hadn't left Quebec, with the in, is there a Montrealer here who thinks our infrastructures are in good shape? So you have to rebuild the infrastructures. That's what you have to do in, because infrastructure is a key part of the economy, and you knew that, Stéphane, and things like that. And also, when you lose your job, go back to a personal. When you lose your job, what do you do? You go to the bank, you borrow money, and you feed your family. When you get back your job, you stop. You start paying down the debt. That's what we're going to do. We've kept people at work. We've created jobs. And basically, we're going to now reduce the debt. And we're believed, you know, by what? None the PQ and the CAC. We're believed by the rating agencies and the people that lend us the money. Okay, very interesting text just came in. What would you answer to this, uh, Jean-Francois Lisey? Separation places a knife at the throat of Ottawa. There's nothing to gain financially to anyone to leave Canada. What well, would you respond to well, that text? Take, let's take an example. We, had, we were very much hit in the, in the forestry industry during the crisis. Uh, Raymond couldn't put very much money in it because Ottawa was intervening. $10 million for the auto industry, uh, just almost nothing for forestry. Had we been a sovereign country, we wouldn't have put $10 billion in, in the auto industry. We would have helped our own people here. But if you're a sovereign country, you also wouldn't get the transfer payments and the equalization payments. All in all, there's a book just, just out. All in all, we would, uh, we would uh, save $2 billion a year.
Okay, Plan and North. Well, plan well, when instead of taking your book, take, take take the finance minister's numbers, and you know we're getting your, more your numbers. We're getting more the department's numbers, the guy, the, the numbers of the people that have worked with Jacques Parizeau and Pauline Marouet. And I don't think if you don't respect the finance minister, I, I the finance the department, the, the people, finance minister. But I'm not sure yeah. that you're not biased on that issue. No, I'm not, <laughs> the transfer payments have gone up <laughs> from eight to fourteen biased? billion dollars. Anyone biased on Plan Nor? Let's go around the table. A good idea, Plan Nor. Well, Plan Nor. I mean, uh, uh, to uh, there is richness there you know to be harnessed but what I feel incredible about is that this this uh, project of a generation has not been put to a general discussion about what what will be the general rules about ownership about uh, uh, about who's gonna gain what and and then the, the Liberal uh, Party's refusal just to put ideas on the table and listen to experts from their own team saying, well, we should have more uh, on, on, on super profits. And they just say, no, no, we'll do it our way, and nobody else can, can get into the discussion. In so, studio so, with me, so, Raymond Bachon, the Parti libéral du Québec, Jean-François Lisée, the PQ, Stéphane Le Bionnec uh, of the CAQ. Uh, the Plan Nord, what, what do you make of that, Stéphane? You know, it's interesting that to see that the planner is a good idea, for example, but when I'm looking at what I propose the PQ now, for example, is to have 5% on gross revenue for the corporation, you know, uh, exploiting uh, resources, it's completely nuts. Already with what the liberals did, raising the fees to a level where we are like the, the most expensive in Canada, it's not the solution. And P with PQ, it's always that, tax, 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 and pay later. That's a problem. Where uh, the CAC we just announced this morning, our chief was announcing that we were going to put to have an e economy of owners, five billion in a resource fund for the Quebecers to be owner of our resources, to have a, a bigger stake in our resources. So I think it's good maybe to have an increase of the fees like uh, the Liberals did, but it's not enough. We have to do more than that. Mr. Bachelot? Uh, just on that last point, the only problem what uh, you're saying, if I'm right, I didn't hear, is that still you want to put your hands in the case of the pool. The last time François Legault put his hand in the case of the pool with Bernard Landry is was to sell Provigo to law blocks. No, not at all. the case it's to sell the, Provigo to law blocks. It's not going to be political driven. It's not going to be uh, political driven. The plan no, you know, the PQ was against James Bay. This is $80 billion in investment. This is going to create wealth. This is the new frontier. And this creates wealth in Montreal also. The Chamber of Commerce in Montreal says 15,000 jobs per year with the plan no? billions of dollars of fiscal revenues to pay for our universities and health services we have less than a minute and 20 seconds can any of you fix the high gasoline cost prices i think the only thing that we should do is is turn away from from gas and more uh, more transit and i would have liked the, the the liberal government to put more of its infrastructure money in tra public transit stefan well, you need to have a girl with balls standing in you know, front of the company you know, exploiting the Quebec person. Okay, last, w last one on gasoline, gasoline prices. You need to, to, and we've done that to inform the consumers exactly what's the profit margin profit that they should have, and they're, they're exceeding that. The rest is world prices. I thank you all for joining us. A pleasure having I, I, you in Tommy, studio. It's, thank it, you, it's over. It's can, over. Did you see how fast Can I ask a simple question? Yeah. Why doesn't the CAC have a web, web, an English website okay. after a year? Okay, yes, that, that's a very good question. You know, like nice the, of you to be concerned. We, we don't, we don't have the funds no, of the liberals, obviously. <laughs> All right, thank for you. For website, <laughs> Stéphane. Uh, okay, Come Stéphane Le Bridec of the CAQ, Raymond Bachon of the Parti libéral du Québec, Jean-François Lisée of the Parti Québécois. This is the Tommy Schnurmacher Podcast. Listen.